Now you've got a really nice functional equation for you. So let's jump right into it. So our goal is to find all functions on the real numbers so that f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y plus d times sine x sine y. And we're gonna explore this for different values of d. But let's get started with the case when d is equal to zero, which will actually not work out. And so in that case, we have something called a Cauchy equation or the Cauchy equation, f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y. And I think I did a previous video showing that the only continuous solutions to this equation are either the zero function or this family of exponential functions. Now, in the case when you might have a discontinuous function, I think this is a pretty hard problem, and I don't actually know what the solution to it is. Maybe post in the comments if you have an idea. What we really want to look at here is the case when d is not equal to zero, so that's mostly what we'll consider. Okay, so let's start with this. We'll look at f of x plus y plus z. And what we're really thinking about here is f of x plus y plus z, and we're gonna expand it two different ways. So let's first expand it as noted by the way we're associating x plus y plus z. So here we can write this as f of x plus y times f of z, and then plus d times the sine of x plus y times the sine of z. So that's by using our functional equation over here. And now we can pull this apart some more. We can apply our functional equation to f of x plus y. So that's gonna give us f of x times f of y times f of z. And then we'll have plus d times f of z, which is being multiplied into sine of x times sine of y plus sine of x plus y times sine of z. So again, that's from um, applying our functional equation one more time. But now uh, let's compare that to the following, which is f of x plus y plus z, where we're grouping y plus z. So uh, first application of our functional equation will give us f of x times f of y plus z plus d times the sine of x times the sine of y plus z. And then a second application of this functional equation will give us f of x times f of y times f of z plus d times f of x. And then let's see, this is gonna be sine of y, sine of z, and then plus sine of x times sine of y plus z. So again, that's from our second application of our, let's see, functional equation. But now let's observe some stuff cancels. If we read this from the, maybe this portion of the equation up and around down to this portion of the equation. So both sides of the equation have an f of x uh, times f of y times f of z. So what we really have is the equality of these two things that I'm underlining in blue. But then since d is not zero, I can simply divide this whole thing by d, and we've got an equality of some things involving the function and then uh, some sine function. So let's write that down. So we're gonna have something like this, f of x times sine of y times sine of z plus the sine of x times the sine of y plus z. Let's see, that's gonna be equal to f of z times the sine of x times the sine of y plus the sine of x plus y times the sine of z. So we've got something that looks like that. But now what I'd like to do is evaluate this for y and z both equal to pi over two. So let's see, we'll set y equal to z equal to pi over two and see what happens. That means that x will be our only variable and we actually should come up with an equation for x or for f of x. So that's cool. And well, you might say, well, y pi over two, 
Well, very simply, notice that sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that makes everything nice. Okay, so that's going to give us f of x here, because these are both 1, and then it'll be plus, so notice that we'll have sine of x times sine of pi, but sine of pi is 0, so that simply cancels out. And then over here on the right-hand side, we'll have f of pi over 2. And then sine of x times sine of y, but let's see, that's just going to turn into the sine of x, because sine of y is sine of pi over 2, which is 1. And then plus, observe that we'll have sine of, let's see, it's going to be x plus pi over 2. But the sine of x plus pi over 2 is the same thing as the cosine, just by the way that sine and cosine are related by that shift. So really we have cosine of x times the sine of pi over 2, but the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So we're left with something like this. Okay, so now let's bring this version of our equation up to the top and then see if we can figure out the possible values for f of pi over 2. Thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying it, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider subscribing. It really helps us out. So we left off with the following form for our function. We have f of x is a sine x plus cosine of x. And that's where a is equal to f of pi over 2. Now, what I'd like to do is determine the possible values of that capital A. So what we'll do is plug this version of our function, our fun function must have this format, into our functional equation. So let's see that. Let's start with this. We'll have f of x plus y equals, so we know that's got to be f of x times f of y plus d times sine of x times sine of y. But then we also know that that is equal to a times sine of x plus y plus the cosine of x plus y. But then bringing this down, we know that that is going to be a sine of x plus cosine of x times a sine of y plus cosine of y and then plus d sine of x sine of y. Again, that's just putting in what we know for our function. Okay, great. But now, next up what I'd like to do is perhaps multiply this out right here. So that's going to give us a squared, and then we have sine of x times sine of y. And then, let's see, we're going to have an a times, we'll have cos x times sine y, and then plus sine x times cos y. So that's just from the cross terms. And then next we'll have plus cos x cos y and then plus d sine x uh, sine y. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. But now let's search our brains for some trig identities and let's observe that there is a trig identity that says that this stuff that I'm underlining in peach, cos x sine y plus sine x cos y is exactly the sine of x plus y. But that's occurring on both sides of the equation. So since that's occurring on both sides of the equation, we can subtract it from both sides of the equation and it cancels. So we've got something like that. And then, well, can we do something else as well? Well, yeah, we can, but let's move some stuff around first. So observe now I've got a squared sine x sine y equals, so it's going to be cos of x plus y plus the cosine of x times the cosine of y and then minus d sine x sine y. And then I just realized that this should have had a minus sign attached to it as well. But now let's recall the sum angle formula for cosine and see if we can get some simplification here. So it turns out that it's cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. So that's actually really good news because this cos x cos y will cancel with this cos x cos y. And then what we have left over will allow us to factor a sine x sine y from this right-hand side of the equation. 
So doing so, we'll have sine x, sine y times, uh, let's see, minus 1, minus d. But let's see, now we can divide by this sine x, sine y, and then maybe take the square root, and we'll see that a must be equal to plus minus the square root of minus 1 minus d. But notice that this is only a real number if d is strictly bigger than 1, or I guess I should say bigger than or equal to negative 1. And that allows us to summarize our situation over here. So notice if d is less than negative 1, we have f of x is equal to, I'm going to change the order a little bit, cosine of x plus minus the square root of minus 1 minus d times the sine of x. So we've got two solutions, one for the plus and one for the minus. Now if d is equal to negative 1, we have a single solution, and that solution is f of x equals cos x. Now if d is bigger than negative 1 and d is not equal to 0, there is uh, no solution. And there's no solution because, well, there's no solution to this quadratic equation in A over the real numbers. And look, our function is supposed to go to the real numbers. So that covers all possible solutions. Of course, including this one when D is equal to zero, which was our Cauchy equation. And that's a good place to stop.